tonight? Ken's up. Yeah, Ken's on the screen. Yeah, Ken's up above. Cool. I'm here. Okay. Hello. Oh, good. We actually we have we have everybody tonight. We got the full house. So uh, there, there he is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's seven o'clock. We might as well get the show on the road. Good evening. It is December 15th, and this is a meeting of the Shrewsbury Conservation Commission. As a preliminary matter, this is John Ostrowski, Chairman of the Conservation Commission. Please permit me to confirm that all members and support staff are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Martha Gatch? Here. Jason Port? Here. Bob Jakes? Here. Ken Polito. Here. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Brad Stone? Here. This open meeting of the Conservation Commission is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020. Due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting, the Conservation Commission is convening by telephone and video conference via Google Meet, as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I, the chair, will call on each applicant to make their project presentation. After they conclude their presentation, the chair will go down the line of commission members first and then to staff members, inviting each by name to provide any comment or questions. After commission members and staff have spoken, the chair will afford public comment. The chair asks that members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Upon completion of public comment, I will call upon the commission members to offer a motion and then for a second. Each vote taken on the motion will be conducted by roll call vote. Lastly, please remember to mute and unmute your phone by pressing star six or mute your computer when you are not speaking so as not to trigger your camera feed or background noise. All right, turning to the agenda. Our first item is to review and approve minutes of which we have none tonight. The second item is to sign bills. Brad, are there any bills we'll have to come in and sign? I don't know, but if, if there are, we'll have you sign them when you come in. Okay. All right, moving on to item three, meetings and hearings. Uh, we have actually uh, the first three items, uh, they're continued public hearings. And uh, all three are going to be continued until our January 19th meeting, and I'm going to read them. The first one is a continued public hearing regarding the notice of intent filed by Equestrian Building Company for driveway construction, utility connections, and drainage connections at 183 Spring Street. That hearing will be continued until our next meeting, which is January 19th, 2021. The next one is our, a continued public hearing regarding the notice of intent filed by Equestrian Building Company for the construction of a single family house, utility connections and stormwater management systems at 185 Spring Street. That hearing will be continued until our next meeting which is January 19th, 2021. The next hearing is also a continued public hearing. It's regarding the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation filed by 160 Holden Street LLC for wetlands resources at 274 to 378 Holden Street. That hearing will also be continued until our next meeting, which is January 19th, 2021. 
Okay, going on to our first active hearing. This is a continued public hearing. It's regarding the notice of intent filed by Anthony and Noreen Deseglia for site grading at 20 Whitney Street. I believe Wayne Bellick was the presenter last time. Is Wayne on with us tonight? Uh, I'm not hearing a response from Wayne or does anyone from 20 Whitney Street, is anyone from 20 Whitney Street with us tonight? All right, I don't hear, we'll keep this up. We'll bring this up later in the meeting. Maybe Wayne hasn't made it on yet. We'll move on to our next one. Uh, this is also a continued public hearing. And it's regarding the request for an amended order of conditions filed by Waterview Realty Trust for retaining walls, grading, and stormwater system revisions at 51 to 53 Bayview Drive. And uh, before we open this, I just want to make a comment. I wasn't at our last meeting, but I did review the tapes for all of these continued meetings, and I'll be participating tonight in actions regarding them. Uh, this one is Bill Hannigan, and I think I saw Bill's name on the thread i am here good right, evening bill. good evening bill why don't you walk us through the modifications you made to the plans okay um can i present if i hit present sure. now brad I... okay okay can we everyone see that no yeah, we had this last time. Let me try this again. Ah. It's no. come coming up now, Bill. Yeah. Okay, we see that. Yep. Excellent. Um, so at, at the last meeting, we had presented uh, a set of plans, which is the prior revision to this shown as construction re revision number two, number one. And that plan showed, uh, just to recap for John, that plan showed a single retaining wall um, being constructed, uh, changing some grades around, changing some, some, um, uh stair positions around etc and <clears throat> at the commission's meeting they they made it pretty clear that they would prefer the tiered retaining wall system so what we've done on the uh set of plans we've we've brought back um the tiered system that was uh proposed originally uh we are using a different wall um i'll zoom into that to show that um Part of, the, part of the questions that I'm trying to answer are not only relative to conservation, but also relative to building and engineering and drainage. So the lower section of walls now uh, will be built. If you notice that this is a, a two foot deep section, uh, um, a block section, the lower section, the very foot bottom uh, block will be a four foot section. What that allows us to do is eliminate the geo grid for this lower section right in here. Um, and then from there, we would, we would uh, have the stair system, which is kind of convoluted in here, but the stair system would come um, from a landing uh, where it would be a, a step down, then down several steps to a landing, and then turn and come back down several steps to another landing. So that would bring us from the, uh, the uh, grade behind uh, at the basement level, essentially down the wall system um, approximately 10 feet um, to the grade down below. So the grade up above is actually it's more than that. So uh, this is 72.8 down to 60. So it's about 13 feet. Um, so there's a, a sufficient stair system to do that. In this area here, um, we would need to put in helical piles. Um, the, the, uh, the, the applicant owner and developer um, was considering the possibility of, of having to excavate and put footings in for the, for the uh, stair system, which would be basically a um, uh, 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 pressure treated system with Trex type finish to it. 
Um, but putting in the, with being this close to the water and the groundwater, putting in a, or excavating in this area for a uh, typical footing uh, would have been uh, difficult uh, and probably caused, you know, more, more work than needed to be done by putting in helical piles. They have a small bobcat size um, rig, actually a little bit smaller than that, and they can literally drill them right into the ground. There would be a concrete pad in this location at, added in for a landing. Um, that would bring you essentially up to this level. And then from here, we would have, uh, we'd be able to do supports um, into the grade of the wall system without interfering with um, the geo grids because it, it's not going to be there anymore in this particular section. Um, so from there, we'd get up to the top section. So um, this area here was shown in the original plan. Uh, it had a very similar wall configuration. Um, and now we're, we're changing the, the block system um, and what I'd like to do is go back to, I had supplied this overlay plan uh, for consideration. And so the kind of the, the bluish one is what we're proposing today. The red system is what was approved. So you can see that this wall was back in here a little further. There was a wall in this location, which tiered out um, another wall, uh, which came along the front in here and a uh, another section of wall here and the stair system was built within um, the, the wall uh, cavity. So what was happening was the geogrid that was being required uh, mainly for this section here was really getting into, um, it was getting very complicated and because of the height, it was gonna end up needing to be almost a poured wall system in this area here to, um, to, uh, to basically just be able to construct the stairs down. So what we did was we went in and we changed this in the last set of plans. We got rid of this two-tiered system and we had a single wall system essentially in this area. And the, the commission um, at the last meeting said that the intent of the previous approval was that the tiered system was preferred. So that's why we're bringing that back. Um, what I'm also showing here, and I want to point this out is that this is the green is the original um, from the old house this is where the stairs came down to a landing and another set of stairs came in here. It was an old wall that's in, in this area here. Um, so what I wanted to show that for was basically for the purpose of saying we're not really extending any further. We've actually pushed the wall back a little bit, but we're not extending further towards the lake than the previous structures uh, were in this area. This area was, will be regraded and cleaned up and be basically loam and seed uh, grass area down below in this area here. So I'm, I'm doing, I'm trying to show that uh, the wall system is back to a tiered system, um, number one. Number two, that the, the construction of the, of the stairs on the face of the wall, where it was proposed to be internal to the wall system, doesn't actually extend further than what we had in the original uh, project. So those are the changes to the plans. Um, they're, they're shown on this detail for the, for the plan, full plan set but I felt providing that overlay um, would be helpful for the commission to review. Um, so if there are any questions, I'd be happy to address them. Okay. Um, Martha? I have no questions, thank you. Jason? No questions at this time. Bob? Uh, I'd just like to say I appreciate uh, your bringing back uh, what seems to be uh, Pretty close to the original approved plan, and uh, uh, I have no question. Hey, thank you, Ken. Uh, one question: Do you intend to do any work beyond the limits of the erosion control um, uh, in the lake or calling in the dock? There, there is an existing um, set hey. of stairs in this area here, which don't, it doesn't show up on this sheet. Um, I go back up to, I don't know how to do this. My screen just doesn't move around. It's just stuck in the spot. I can't right go up or down again anywhere. There's a set of, there's a set of stairs that go down to, I believe this is where we're going to this area on, here. Let me try and shut the thing down. I'm trying to turn it all off right now. Um, go back to the beginning. Is there someone else talking or frustrated? Yeah, I think we got somebody. Is David Sadowski? David. David Sadowski, are you uh are you muted right now? John, like I just muted, muted a mic. I think we should be all set. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. So there's there's an existing set of stairs down here, and I believe the dock is in this area. I'm not sure whether it's left or right, but 
um, that's proposed to be um, remain in place um, so mm -hmm. that that's that's exist. Okay, I'm all set. Thank you. Okay, Brad. I don't have any questions with respect to the plan. I'm just curious if um, we have an update for the commission in terms of what's been done to the site since the last meeting for uh, good housekeeping and erosion control. Bill, can you respond to that? It looks like his screen's frozen, Brad. Brad, I think he's going to try to log back in, I would assume. That's, that's what it looks like. Yeah. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, sorry about that. I think I might lost my internet for a minute. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, so, Brad, I think the last part you were asking about housekeeping, I believe since the last pictures, and I haven't been out to the site since the last time uh, we were we met, uh, but I believe that the um, the wall sections that were started to be installed have been removed uh, from the area, uh, along with uh, kind of cleaning up the grading and basically um, preparing it for basically the, the winter, because at this point, I'm not sure whether we're going to get in there unless we get some real good weather and doesn't sound like it we're going to based upon the forecast for Thursday. So um, I think that that's what we had talked about that at the last meeting. I, I'm not sure if you've been by the site since. No, I haven't, but I mean, it, it clearly looked like it needed some address and, you know, the, the bottom of the slope erosion control areas needed some work as well as if the site's not going to be operated on and you really should look at what temporary BMPs are going to be put in place along that slope before construction commences again. I, I think what we can do, I, I know Chuck the Doming's on the line, maybe we can just have him chime in about whether he's done any work out there to beef that stuff up since our last go around. And I think we probably should do a quick inspection tomorrow before the storm uh, hits just to make sure everything's buttoned up. I think that makes sense. I thought he was on. Oh, he's there. Chuck? Yeah, you got me now. How are you? Okay. So I was just saying that Brad was asking about making sure that the site's buttoned up uh, relative to the previous work. I told him that the, the blocks had been removed um, from the site and the, um, or at least moved from that area uh, and that you had gone through and, and cleaned up the area, but he was saying that there was some erosion control that just wanted to be maybe be touched up. And I said that it might be not be a bad idea to take a quick look at it tomorrow and, and tighten everything up before the storm on Thursday. Yeah, we can certainly do that. Not a problem. Brad, do you want me to just send you some pictures or do you want to try me out there? I'm not going to be able to meet you. So if you could send some photos, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Anything else, Brad? No, that's all I had. Thank you. All right. Does anyone in the public have any questions or comments regarding this hearing? All 
All right, I don't hear any, so we will close the hearing. You're all set, Bill. All right, thank you very much. Okay. John, I see that Wayne Billick has joined. I saw that too, yeah, why don't we go back to that. Wayne, are you there? Hello, folks. Yeah, let me just uh, read the intro again. We uh, passed you over because you weren't there. Okay. Uh, this is a continued public hearing regarding the notice of intent filed by Anthony and Noreen Biseglia for site grading at 20 Whitney Street. Go ahead, Wayne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, Wayne Bellick, Land Design Collaborative. Uh, as you folks may recall, uh, we opened a hearing a, a few weeks ago and uh, during the uh, discussion, uh, Brad had raised some questions about the, the resource areas at the site and the delineation of said resource areas. He had suggested that perhaps we uh, perform a site visit with the wetland consultant, uh, um, Scott Heim from Northeast uh, Ecological Services. So following uh, that particular meeting, we had gone out to the site, uh, performed the site visit, and had looked at the two resource areas that he had uh, questioned was the BBW um, and the uh, bordering land subject to flooding. Uh, the question he had about the BBW is the was the limits of the BBW. Uh, he had done some uh, augering uh, when he had gone out there and exhibited uh, or had uh, found some hydric soils, uh, as did uh, Mr. Hine. So during that visit that, that we attended following that last meeting, we had uh, walked the site and determined that while it had a few of the indicators uh, to constitute a, uh, a resource area, it was determined that uh, with the lack of uh, the required vegetation, uh, the BVW didn't extend as, as far up as uh, we initially thought uh, or was discussed at the last meeting. So then we looked to the border, bordering land subject to flooding. Uh, and based on what we observed in the, in the field and some of the information that I had gathered, uh, it appeared that the bordering land subject to flooding did come up into the yard uh, and we were uh, initially proposing work below that elevation. And that elevation, based on some of the anecdotal uh, uh, testimonies and the evidence in the field uh, on the plan is elevation 400. Uh, and in looking at that, uh, we determined where that was on the ground. And we have since uh, revised and uh, have reissued the plan to you folks, uh, showing all the work uh, being upgradient of that, we move the total slope, the erosion sediment control measures further upgradient out of uh, the uh, resource area. Uh, so that's basically where we are. Okay, you ready for questions? Martha. I, I have no questions. Jason. No questions. Bob. No questions. Ken. All set. Brad? I'm all set. Does anyone in the public have any questions or comments regarding this hearing? All right, hearing none, we'll close the hearing, Wayne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. You folks have a safe, healthy, and uh, happy holiday season. You also. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, moving on to our the last of our continued public hearings. This one is a continued public hearing regarding the notice of intent filed by Michael Perdoni for the construction of a garage for commercial vehicles with upstairs storage and small office area at 7 Forest Avenue. David. 
Yes, I'm here. Uh, do you want to bring us up to date as to the changes you've made? Sure. Um, through the chair, uh, commission members and general public listening, we examined the um, letter that your agent Brad had put together and made a response letter to all the different uh, concerns that he had on the site. Basically, though, we've widened the way, the travel way in front of the building to be 20 feet wide. Uh, this moves everything back to the edge of the um, existing roadway that's out there at this time. Uh, th that was a request from the fire department. I guess there was a state law that any type of a commercial building must have a minimum 20 foot travel way in front of the building itself. Um, with, with that happening, our site area uh, decreased the area that we were actually going to be um, uh, developing. Um, it, it's decreased down to 4,675 square feet. Uh, we also answered the area about the uh, grindings that were on the um, that are on the lot now. We're treating the stormwater as if it's a forest, but um, we do have res we have some grindings that were removed, and we indicated where they were on the plan. Um, we took the two park we took the three parking spaces that were in front of the building and removed them, and we have tandem parking on the left side or the south side of the building now, running up along the sidewalk. We have a grass swale along there to bring stuff to the catch basin, and we've moved that catch basin a good seven feet from the previous location to the west to get it away from the utilities. We had the water department go out and mark the water services uh, on the roadway, and I, I showed that on a utility plan. We actually increased the plan set. We started with one, we went to five, now we're at seven sheets. Um, we tried to break everything up so the grading could be easily seen. There's a lot of activity that's going on there with an oil water separator. We have, um, of course, bathrooms and we have a domestic water that goes into the building. And I also showed the underground electric that will go from the uh, pole that's going to be relocated to the north. Um, right now, the storm water, um, we, we take and we, um, we recharge 100% of the storm water. All of the roofs are recharged into the um, systems that are on the north and south of the building. And the catch basin also picks up everything from the two parking spaces, uh, the walkways, and the two driveways in front of the building. Um, we had to put in a retaining wall to the north of the sidewalk. That retaining wall is one to three feet high. That helps with the elevation because the ground was anywhere from uh, a foot to four feet higher in the building in that corner. And that helps us with the storm water and able to direct it into a swale. Uh, we think the site plan is a lot better than it was before. And as Brad had noted, there was another resource area to the east of Forest Ave that was delineated by Alton Stone. You can see his picture there. I, I apologize for my voice earlier. Alton was having trouble getting volume into his computer and he tried calling me on the phone and left his mic on. But anyways, he delineated the area to the east of Forest, and then we provided um, hay, uh, straw bales with the silt fence at the top of Forest Ave now, so that no nothing can flow down the hill towards that resource area. So the plan has been expanded. There's more um, erosion control device on it. The grindings have been shown on the plan. Um, most of them are going to be removed inside the area that's going to be actually developed on the property. I don't know if that was too much all at once, but it was no, a long sentence. Just uh, more importantly, David, uh, the plan revisions, uh, I understand they didn't reach uh, the town hall till, was it yesterday or? Yesterday at one o'clock. Yeah. We didn't get the, we didn't get the water line marked until late Friday. And then to get the plans in, they had to get reviewed and stamped on Monday. Right. And you're also getting sets over to DEP also. They were sent out at the same time simultaneously. Brad was the okay. first name and then um, DEP was second. All right. Well, let me, uh, why, don't we, why don't we go right over to Brad right now and get some comments from Brad. I know he hasn't had a chance to uh, digest the latest changes. So Brad, would you, would you like to comment? Right. I mean, that's that's exactly it, John. I haven't looked at what was submitted yet. Okay. 
Uh, does anyone else on the commission tonight have any comments or questions they would like to ask David? Uh, it sounds like this is going to carry over to another meeting. Uh, but if they have anything to say tonight, uh, now's the time. All right, I don't see any commission members offering anything at this point, David. So uh, this is Martha. Yes, I, Martha. I would I would just like to say um thank you to uh to Mr. Sadowski for um for bringing in all those different agencies and making sure that this is done right. I know it's a lot of it's a lot of coordination, but it uh but I think it's gonna be a much better project. Thank you, thank you, Martha. Through the, I guess I have to say through the through the chair. Thank you, Martha. Okay. Anyone else with any questions, comments? Is Does there anyone from the general? Uh, well, that's, I'm, John, that's is there anyone that's from what? the general public that would yeah, like David, to comment? David, I'm running the meeting. That's where okay. I'm going to next. Does anyone in the public have any questions or comments regarding this hearing? <laughs> All right, I don't hear any. So, David, you know where we stand. Uh, would you be requesting a continuation of this hearing till our next meeting? I certainly would. There's nothing we're trying to hide, and um, we'd like to have a thorough review by uh, your agent and anyone else, and then we would um, we'd like to be on the agenda at the next meeting. Okay. All right, this hearing will be continued until our next meeting, which is January 19th, 2021. <clears throat> All right, thanks, David. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. <clears throat> okay, we have uh, new hearings from this point forward. Martha, would you like to read the first one? Notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, that the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation Dam Maintenance Program, 180 Beeman Street, West Boylston, Mass, 01583, has filed a notice of intent for the rehabilitation of the Rossland Hill Dam, located at 315R Prospect Street and 83R Hill Street, a public hearing will be held on the above notice at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening, December 15, 2020. Okay, do we have a representative of the applicant here? Yes, my name is Rick Hanavan. I'm a wetland scientist with Tie and Bond. All right, Rick, do you wanna give us a rundown on the project? I don't know if you can share the screen. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna ask about. Let me, let me try to turn the plans on. Okay, hopefully you see uh it's coming well, up. Yeah. yeah. It's coming up right now. All right. So uh so if you're familiar with the project area, this is uh Prospect Street here, and then this area uh to the west is the you know, it's a larger area that that uh DCR owns and the dam is in this clearing uh in the area that's otherwise primarily forested and uh you know shrub swamp forested wetland this is a uh, well i let me let me step back for a second so like i said i'm a well scientist with time bond i'm based in worcester i'm working for dcr as was mentioned on the the introduction of the project a uh, note on the plans here that this design is done by uh natural resource conservation service they so like this was formerly the soil conservation service back in the 60s when this was built and they're a subset of the usda uh they built this flood control system and several others in the area back in the 60s this is a their engineering consultant doing the design of the project so um I'm going to do my best to explain the engineering, but please bear with me because I'm a wetland scientist and not a dam engineer. So uh, this is a rendering of the what the site will look like following the rehabilitation. The 
most notable feature here is that there's a going to be a roller compacted concrete hardened uh, auxiliary spillway through part of the section of the dam. Currently, most of the dam is is grassed only and the auxiliary spillway is to the north, kind of where my mouse is, if you can see that. And this project is basically raising that area and hardening this to uh, increase the dam safety in the event that the auxiliary spillway is flowing. Basically, if the dam fills up to the top and water starts flowing over the, over the top, we wanna to make sure that the dam uh, doesn't fail. So looking at, uh, you know, an aerial base with topography on it. Uh, the, in the existing conditions, Rawson Hill Brook flows from west to east through a pipe in the under the earthen fill section of the dam, and then continues east under Prospect Street. Um, much of the channel in this area next to the access road to the dam is. Uh, you know, was altered in the 60s when this project was constructed. There's a significant wetland associated with the Ross and Hill Brook upstream. So this uh, is like an alder dominated swamp with some sections of tussock sedge uh, marsh upstream. There's some forested wetlands on either side of this site access road both to the south and the north. Those are connected, you know, so everything here is a BBW. There is uh, a small isolated wetland here in the, this path is the current auxiliary spillway. So uh, this is the existing grades. So in proposed, you know, we're on, Fortunately, we're rotating. So north is now to the left of the screen here. This is the same that you saw in that rendering, this roller compacted concrete hardening. And then these grades in here show that the, the what is the low point where the water would be uh, flowing at a high pool storage elevation is going to be raised to maintain a, a constant top of the dam basically making sure that if flows are happening at a high elevation they're shifting from the space here to the north over to this new hardened area uh, one thing to note here is that to increase the grades in here there is a section of of uh clearing of trees in this section to allow for the increase in elevation to meet this high point just into the woods north of the existing clearing so currently the tree line kind of follows a straight line and this section is new clearing. Um, this plant set has, you know, a lot of plants. Like if you've flipped through it, you see. So this, what I noted, this hatch here is the the clearing. This is the, you know, increasing the hardening of the, the crest of the dam. There's some internal dam drainage work being happening in this space. There's a, uh, you know, we can get into the sections, but basically uh, th this is the inlet to the dam flowing through here and the work that is uh, occurring in resource area at bank is basically right at the outlet. So the pipe of the, the pipe remains unchanged. So they unfortunately do not have to dig through the entire earth and spillway it's basically only the outlet that's modified where there's the last section of pipe and the dam will be removed and replaced uh, to extend that slightly. And then there's a small section of the stream that will flow over the, the roller compacted spillway before it re enters the channel. So there's uh, the existing pipe stops somewhere about where my mouse is. This uh, polygon just downstream of that is a uh, it's going to be hardened with riprap for scour protection and this area is basically the the proposed alteration of bank um let me give back a couple of slides apologize but there is also this project also involves some work in bbw where there's hopefully this zoom works but there is a 
a drain along the downstream toe of the dam that is established as a BVW. <laughs> so there's uh, flow because of the internal infrastructure of the dam and there's well and vegetation in this space. So this, while a man-made area and it's a linear feature is, does meet the definition of BVW and this BVW will be altered by the project. This is part of where that roller concrete hardening will occur. So this area is mowed and we can look at some pictures later, but it's, uh, you know, it's certainly not a high value wetland, but it is, does meet the criteria of BBW and this, this space is where uh, the BBW impact for the project occurs. Rick, can I just stop you there for a second yeah, with you? Right now, this whole, I'm pretty familiar with this whole area. Right now, it's just the big earthen dam and the emergency spillways all earthen. Uh, when you use the term hardened, uh, are you talking, uh, you know, man-made materials now? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, so like, can you sort of point it out on the plan here more with your mouse as to is the dam itself still going to be an earthen dam or is it going to be faced uh, with riprap all the way up to the top or? Yep. No, this is it's good. Good question. So let me go back to this rendering. So this is existing conditions, this aerial, like you said, really the, what's out there. There's a little bit of, of concrete for this pipe, but essentially it's all mowed grass. The change that's being proposed is this is going to be a section of concrete from the crest of the dam. Okay. Basically to the toe. So the downstream face of the dam, like this is the, this is the wet area and this is the inlet. That's sort of the inlet concrete. control structure. Yep. That's correct. And that's no work. No work occurs on that, but okay. the downstream face is where the alteration is. So, and that is, uh, mm -hmm. this edge is is uh, sheet piling to prevent scour from a flow is coming down to prevent this from eroding and causing the whole thing to fail. So that's sort of anchoring the the earthen dam with a with this you know, sheet piling to sort of lock that in place. And then this is. Uh, this is concrete. So it's That's a all concrete. Okay. All the way. Yeah. Down. It's a particular you know, like structural way of doing it where they're they're not just pouring it and letting it cure, but they're actually going over it with a with a roll roller. Okay. So it's it's a particular type of concrete for this situation. But this is this is really sort of the the significant change of this rehabilitation is taking the flow if we look again, so this is looking to the south, this space where my mouse is here is lower and you can, maybe you can see on your screen that there's a slight color change in this space. This is where grade is gonna be raised and then flow as this impoundment backs up will now flow over the, the new concrete outlet. Okay, instead of around it, currently it would go around the whole thing. Exactly, it would go like this way. Yeah. And, the the engineering concern is that like as an earth only system if these flows cause scour then the whole fill section will erode okay i got you now so when you're talking hard and you're referring to that concrete section of the dam there okay. exactly so it's it's you know it's not nothing and it's probably you know not the aesthetic choice but it is this is really driven by uh, dam safety. Yep. The the NRCS I mentioned had done this design. I in the you know we submitted a pretty substantial document. We did not include their engineering and environmental alternatives, but they had produced a couple of also hundred page documents reviewing at different engineering alternatives and environmental alternatives and selected this based on those reviews it really was the case that this design was the both the the most cost effective for the safety criteria they were looking for and also the least damaging because it allowed the work to be constrained in the existing clearing so they they did not have to like you know widen any of the work over either you know slightly to the north or some clearing but for the most part removing this existing auxiliary spillway and sort of locating it in place on this downstream face allowed the 
the footprint of the project to be as small as possible. Okay. Uh, let me skip ahead a few plans to just point out a couple of other elements. Um, so <clears throat> there is a proposed BBW creation area that's on the the upstream of the dam at the edge of the existing wetland. We're proposing the limit is where it is is because of the existing mowing, which is altering the vegetation. So it's likely that just stopping mowing in certain areas will allow the BVW line to move a bit. We're promoting that in this space by planting this with more uh, more shrubs. So it's alders and I believe I have uh, winterberry. There's, those are noted on one of the sheets um, to allow the well line to creep back up to where it would where it would based on the grades once the mowing is stopped. And then there's a section of the auxiliary spillway that will be allowed to uh, revert back to a natural meadow. So this red line is a natural vegetation area where uh, this area will be used for construction staging. So the, this black dash is an area where they're going to be either storing equipment, material, other materials for the construction process. Um, and then when they're completed, the gravel area will, will be removed. It'll be loamed and seeded with uh, a wildlife seed mix. And then that does not have to be mowed anymore. So the, the area of dam maintenance will decrease and this will be allowed to revert to a more natural condition. Planting trees is really a concern for dam engineers. So we do have two narrow green areas here for tree planting to allow for the tree line to progress a bit up here, but they did not want to put trees too close to the dam because they're just going to have to remove them again anyway. So um, this is really our mitigation area, both for well and impact. And is it's an area that allows to provide for uh, more a more natural condition for a lot of this space following construction. Um, I guess also on this sheet, there's some construction period uh, erosion controls that are noted. One one thing in particular is that during the period where they're working on the pipe. There's going to be a small impoundment created at the inlet structure, and then water will be pumped around the construction area and discharged back into the, the stream below the dam. So when they can't just let water flow through the dam during construction, there's, there's a means of making sure that the stream isn't just blocked up completely and it, they will allow for flow downstream so that there's no impacts to downstream aquatic resources. Um, to access this north side of the site, there's going to be a temporary timber stream crossing over this construction section of the channel. And there will be work to upgrade the access road from Prospect Street into the site. If you've walked it, it can be muddy at times and they'll be running concrete trucks through here. So the plan is to add gravel and then also line both sides of the access road with erosion controls to make sure that the the construction access is contained to the road and doesn't, you know, it's quite close to both the the constructed stream channel and adjacent wetlands. So um, the construction period erosion controls are designed to con constrain the site, both the this work area and the access to Prospect Street. There is a stabilized construction exit entrance exit as well here. Um, there's other sections, you know, I mentioned the outlet. This is maybe a good section view where you can see that uh, 
I mentioned that there was a section of existing pipe that's to be removed. You can see in a profile section that's in this space. So part of, you know, there's a short section of open, that's currently concrete channel that will now be open concrete, well, open fl flow over open concrete. And then this is that stabilized area to ensure that the transition from this new outlet is stabilized. The If you've seen the current channel, it's rock lined as well. It's not, I wouldn't call it rip wrap, but it's certainly a, you know, a constructed trapezoid channel with stone hardened channels. So channel banks. So this is, you know, this is counted in our impact area, but it's, it's not a significant change from the section of channel right next to the dam. Um, and there's plenty of uh, engineering information about how these, how the roller concrete spillway is constructed to make sure that it provides the proper hardening. So these, all these lifts are very carefully designed as far as how the, how the new spillway is going to be constructed. So that, I think I will leave my presentation there. If, uh, if that, if that makes sense, I'm sure there'll be questions. Okay. Martha. Thank you. Um, there's a lot to digest and, uh, my computer is being very glitchy today. So, I'm I'm having to follow along from our from our documents drive, so I'm not able to see what you were actually referring to when you were speaking. But I think I've been doing a good job. Um, yes. I have a I have a, a higher level question, which is, when might this happen, and how long do you anticipate the construction phase would take? Good good questions, and I apologize for our setting, you know, and thanks for bearing with me. Uh, the plan is to start work in the spring. NRCS is, I believe, bidding this project at this time. Um, and I believe the duration of the project is well, roughly a year, but you know, that's obviously like not, don't, don't, uh, it's not going to be 365 days and not 64 or 66, but like it's, it's, that's, you know, a, probably a construction season, a single construction season and hopefully 2021. So if it carried through into the winter, there would be appropriate buttoning up measures taken. Absolutely. Better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not only for the resources that you're, charged to protect, which, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all, I'm all for, but also the, the dam safety side of this, they cannot leave on open earth out here for extended periods of time for safety purposes. So I noted earlier that like the, we're using a native seed mix, you know, wildflower mix for an area that they can move out of the mowing regime, but the seed mix that will be retained in the grass areas is dictated by NRCS and it's dr driven for uh, stabilization of earth. You know, they, they, they absolutely need to keep the, the earth and dam part of this uh, in, intact and, and stabilized, you know, the rest of the site also, they certainly can't, uh, just let it go for the winter and they need to look at their erosion controls and protecting the the wetlands. But yeah, this this NRCS will be managing the the construction or the engineering firm that or the construction firm that does this work and their you know soil conservation service is their name. So that I I'm I'm sure that's gonna be a concern for them as well. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, and then I understand about the the need for for tree clearing. I'm just wondering about the extent. Do you have a square foot estimate? I do. If it's not in this, I 
I, it's, it is in the narrative. So Five thousand four hundred and seventy-five square feet of a, it's approximately thirty trees, based on uh, my estimate in that area. Okay, thank you. I'm all set. Yeah. Jason, no questions. Bob, all well, set. Ken, uh, I have a question. Couple questions. Um, this area, there's a lot of. Uh, wildlife habitat in this area. I was wondering if there was going to be any fencing installed because right now everything is open and open. Yep. So that, I don't know if that change. Yeah, no permanent no permanent fencing. That's another uh thing that floodplain and dams don't like. So there'll be uh you know erosion controls to limit the you know, confine the site during construction, but there's there's no there's no you know like sort of maintenance house or anything out here. You know, there's no electricity or running water or anything else going to the system. It's and there's there will be no new fencing. No, I when I was out here most recently, I was I looked up from looking at my soils and I was surrounded by turkeys. So yeah, no, it's definitely well used by wildlife thank you yeah brad um i guess my first quick and easy question is is i didn't notice anything on the dep site in terms of a file number do you know no. if you've received one yet rick i looked and i did not i um it, this has been a long process on the NRCS side and my side as well with some uh, reviews on the CR side. So the, I was concerned that the there may have been some issue with the check, but I have at least seen that uh, the filing fee on the state side was cashed. I did not get a chance to check with Central Region to see if there was any other issue with the file number, but I. I am also aware that there's there's no file number yet. Okay. Um, and then too, I I did take some time to go through as as much of the submittal as I could. Um, so I may have missed a, a couple of things here and there, but I you know I I focused in the um, the impacted areas that the commission has jurisdiction on, mm -hmm. um, particularly with the land subject to flood, the border and land subject to flood and and the question I had there, um, I I don't have the H and H analysis to look at for this project. I don't think that was part of what you submitted. And quite frankly, for something like this, it's probably going to be over my head anyway. They usually use a a different software program for projects like this than we would use for other types of engineering projects. But the question I have is. Um, it did mention that the you know there, there was some significant fill within the borderland subject to flooding, but it mentioned that it, it wouldn't alter um, the particular um, elevation change there. But we also have a regulated um, floodway in that area that I think is close to 150 feet wide um, at its at its widest point. And I don't recall seeing language there, but I just wanted to, to verify that you meet in the performance standards for work within that area as well. And yeah. also, go, go ahead. And just, just let me just, yeah, if you don't mind before I yeah, forget no, to. Yeah. And, and just with this type of project as well, um, you know, we certainly don't see these every day. So what do you, do you typically have a, a follow-up process with FEMA in terms of, you know, filing for a, letter of map amendment or letter of map revision as you're going through this or when you know if something changes either the the 2d area for that floodplain or, or or changes the floodway or both or something like that um is there anything that you do to to follow up on the federal side of things there i this so good question i can i'll answer what i can and then i will also need to defer again also like a I did speak to uh, one of NRCS's consultants in this process, and 
Um, but so my understanding of their hydrologic, you know, the the real focus of the design is flood flooding, flood protection, existing versus proposed conditions, and their their hydraulic model. The I think really the goal of the design was to maintain existing conditions for in flood conditions. So in their hydrologic analysis, like they've, I believe they would, would be, you know, what I was, what I understood in those discussions was that, yeah, not only is there no change in uh, the lateral limit of floodplain, referencing back to the performance standards for BLSF, but like you said, also the, they wanted to make sure that the the flood way so you know also no changes in velocity no changes you know, like you're not you're not speeding anything up as well like the the flow through this this space uh should match existing and proposed and they you know that part of their their engineering engineering analysis at least i could follow the the, the math not so much but the the your point to the fill, you know, like several other people, myself included, when I was first talking to the engineer, wanted to, you know, ask the questions of like, why, why can't we uh, also just have no net, net fill? And the, this image I have up is really kind of shows that that like, the need to bring this up, this, this gray area in elevation means that particularly this space to upstream side of the, of the the crest of the dam is a fill section. Like, it, you know, another alternative would be to find some other space and and clear and excavate a higher point somewhere to create more flood storage. That, you know, is not what the NRCS is proposing. I don't think it makes sense environmentally because they have done the engineering analysis to show that the the floodplain is not altered, but. Um, this space in here is where the net fill occurs. And one math that I didn't get into the NOI narrative is that the this whole storage volume is 165.7 million gallons. And this net fill for the project is 0.4. So it's it's you know, this is partly how they can mathematically show that there's no change because it's while this is a you know a big area when you're out there looking at it the, the volume of water can but um yeah the compliance and performance standards for blsf is is a is a big deal their engineering analysis i believe does show that they are not changing anything from existing proposed and that's really i that was their engineering directive and that's basically what they used when they set out to design this rehabilitation okay yeah no thank thank you for that i was i was less concerned with the the volume of, of the fill in the in the blsf um you know like i said i, I kind of assumed that the the h and h was done properly mm -hmm. and that part was ironed out um, my bigger concern and thinking of all the hats that our office wears um, was was thinking and what we need to do beyond WPA for compliance with the National Flood Insurance Program, for instance. Yeah. If, if um, you know, if showing showing being able to document that we're they're we're regulating the activities within these areas appropriately, and then if if a if a project this large does in fact change, uh, it, you know it's. The 2D areas, more or less, I guess I'm I'm concerned with. You know, is 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 or there a typical process for following up with the FEMA mapping, or do you just stick to what you've you've issued and get your permits and you're good to go from there, kind of thing? So it's 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 something that's new to us. Like I said, we don't see it every day, so I was just trying to you know feel out what the process normally is when you go through these. Yeah, so you had met Jim Lyons when we did a site walk. He's the NRCS lead. And that when I first started answering, I said, I started to say I would mm -hmm. check back with him. That was the, that's the thing I, I don't know off the top of my head is okay. if the, what other coordination he may be doing with FEMA 
it, it's if so no let me let me let me put that on my to-do list for questions is to ask him about basically the nfip side that you're bringing up right and I, yeah i don't necessarily see that as a big concern for for the noi process more or less that you know as a town-wide thing making sure we're, we're regulating everything the way we're supposed to yeah no hopefully that's a question he can answer for you okay thank you i'm all set mr chairman all right do we have anyone in the public with any questions or comments regarding this hearing all right i'm not hearing any but i do have one quick question for you rick on the outlet pipe that you know you talked about the section being removed and uh, the actual stream bed on the outlet side is a stone line channel mm -hmm. did you say there were modifications being made to that channel uh the stone line channel or i should have like stop sharing oops stop sharing too soon I, let me let me try to get back to the plan and uh yeah the reason um I'm asking is that used to be a very good fishing hole. It was a little deeper than the rest of the stream bed. And it was a very nice habitat for trout actually. And if they are rebuilding it to make sure it maintains the same depth to create a nice pool in there. So I'm, the the that area like so looking at this this section view might be easier this double dashed little section here is where the existing outlet is yep can you blow that up at all rick uh, yeah screen, just so it's uh, yep. that's much better yeah 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 so um we're about 15 feet down, you know, plus or we'll say 17 from this outlet. Okay. And this isn't proposed to be graded. I don't think they probably had the detail of like, if there is a, a hole here, but you know, I honestly, if there's a little scour hole at the outlet of the pipe, it, it was probably a 20 foot long section where the water was probably at least two and a half to three feet deep before it ramped up to a stream bed depth that was closer to probably nine inches to a foot deep but it, it, yeah it wasn't that, a holding area for fishery but that that may be a little altered like going back to the plan view up here like yeah this this section is is it's going to be modified you know, yeah. like the, the they're going to match grades from here, but uh, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, in the field when they're doing it, they just try to uh, match existing. Yeah, I would think that they wouldn't want to make this section too shallow. You know, it's going to be new riprap, so that might not be the fish's favorite. But it, if they at least have some depth there that might still still help like this the way you're describing yeah okay uh we didn't have any questions from the public and i'm going to go back to brad brad do you think you can get your questions answered regarding the limits of the flood line uh outside of this so, hearing or would you like to keep it open well, my my questions again, they, they you know they're more or less outside of the the Wetlands Protection Act, um, but my my bigger concern is with the lack of a, the DEP file number, and you know sometimes we do get comments from DEP. All they're right. never happy if we close hearings with that's with a good point. that not in okay. place. All right. So Rick, not having the DEP file number and not knowing if they are coming in with comments. Would you request yeah. the continuation? I do. I think okay. that makes sense, even though, uh, you know, I would be 
you know, it'd be great to close it out, but I, I would rather keep it open also just to make sure, like Brad said, if there's something you need me to address, then, uh, then we have the ability to, to talk next time. Okay. Okay. We will continue this hearing until our next meeting, which is January 19, 2021. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Martha. Okay. Um, notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of general laws, chapter 131, section 40, that Westbrook Crossing Trust, 1 Westbrook Crossing Drive, Shrewsbury, has filed a request for determination of applicability for the removal of brush, a fallen tree, and detritus at 6 Essex Drive. A public meeting will be held on the above request at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening, December 15, 2020. Okay, do we have a representative for this hearing? Is there a representative for the uh, Westbrook Crossing Trust here tonight? Well, Brad, how would how would you like to handle this one? I mean, we wanted to be specific on what the limits of work would be, and without them here, I don't know how we're going to do it. I I can't really ad advise how the commission should act on this one. I think we really need how to, to hear from the I, uh, I project agree. proponent. I agree. All right, so uh, we've opened it. So. Can we, we should be able to continue it then because of a uh, lack of information, I would assume. Without their input. I would. Okay. This all in favor on this 1, just. Give me a roll call Martha. Aye. Jason. Aye. Bob. Aye. Ken? Yeah. Aye. And John O. I. Okay, this hearing will be continued until our next meeting, uh, which is January 19, 2021. And we are hoping a representative will be there at our next meeting to explain the work. All right, Martha. Notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of general laws, chapter 131, section 40, that Hong Kong 2, 4 Keys, Road, Shrewsbury, Keys House Road, Shrewsbury, has filed a request for determination of applicability for the removal of, tr of trees at 4 Keys House Road. The public meeting will be held on the above request at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening, December 15, 2020. Is there a representative here tonight? For this hearing, oh, I don't hear anyone, Brad. Similar situation. So, um, you, with with the Westbrook one, I can't recall off the top of my head, but this particular one for the meeting invites, I do recall the applicant accepting the invite. So I, I would have anticipated the applicant was going to be here for this one, but to answer your question, John, yes, there's a, you know, there's a number of trees within that application. Um, I think the resource area is much larger than what was presented within the, um, the application, mainly because it's based off of our GIS and the wetlands out there are much more substantial than that. So I, I think that. The commission probably would want to hear from from the applicant and, and look closely at each tree that they want to remove and, and go from there. Okay, is everyone in favor with continuing this to our next meeting, January nineteenth? Uh, Martha. Aye. Jason. Aye. Bob. Aye. Ken. 
Aye. And John Ostrowski, aye. All right, this hearing is going to be continued till our next meeting, January 19, 2021. And will the applicant please show up at that hearing? Martha? <clears throat> Notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, that Ace Dacey's 23 Shirley Road, Shrewsbury, has filed a notice of intent for backyard hardscape and landscaping, including retaining walls, walkway, stairs, and planting at 23 Shirley Road. A public hearing will be held on the above notice at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening, December 15, 2020. Do we have a representative? Is there a representative here tonight? This is a land planning one, Brad. Yes. Yep. And I know I sent an invite to the applicant and also uh, the representative. Can you announce the address again in case I murdered the name? 23 Shirley Road in the applicants, Ace, Ace Stacy's. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Martha. Well, we've opened it, Brad. Uh, yes, hi. So I'm I'm the owner. So we are here. Oh, um, okay. Well, that's good. Um, okay. I'm, I I guess I was expecting the engineers to be here as well, but um, yeah, maybe maybe we can start without them. Yes, definitely. Can uh, can you give us a description of what you would like to do here? Uh, sure. Uh, so you have a you have a plan in front of you, correct? Uh, uh, Brad, do you have one that you could bring up on the screen? We're bringing one up on the screen right now. Okay. Okay, it's up on the okay. screen. Okay, so a few years uh, back, we you know we built a house, and then initially we we had uh, two retaining walls there, so they're still there. And uh, you know we would like to build a third one, um, kind of close close to the shore. Um, this uh, this wall would be just a boulder wall uh, to help us kind of you know. To, to to basically fill in some more dirt and plant um, plant a lawn so we could mow it there just because you know the drop is kind of big and we we can't really do anything there right now um, you know aside from that uh, there are a few few sections of steps that we would like to install uh, also a bunch of abrevitas that goes all along the perimeter uh, on both sides. Uh, there's also another another retaining wall from boulders that goes um, around the shed, uh, and then you know uh, a walkway in front of the house. Also a bunch of planters. Um, yeah. Brad, can you blow up the plan a bit, especially by that retaining wall by the lake in that area? So which which retain wall, John? The one the one closest to the lake. Sure. I think she said there was a proposed one down by the lake. So and that that was some of the questions I would have later on, but it, you know it looks like there's a a wall up in here, but I don't see what's being anything being proposed on the lake there's the one-to-one -one riprap slope labeled i'm not sure if that's you know existing or proposed or but it yeah. doesn't look like there's a wall there is that what you, maybe that's what you're referring to uh is the riprap it's not really a wall but a slope that has rock facing on it correct so this wall so the two walls that we have existing ones right that's right. that we did this a previous one so right. they are on there yep yep 
So this wall would be just a boulder wall. Okay. Okay. It's not really a wall though. It's, it's, uh, at least, well, it's hard for us to tell really from the plan. Uh, how, how so? I, I mean, what, what, like, what do you mean? What I'm saying is it's, it's a, uh, it, it shows a rock wall, or when I say rock, yeah. but it almost yeah. looks like it's placed flat on the ground, not being built up vertically. Is there a section, Brad, that would show us what it looks like through there? No, there's there's really a you know lack of a lot of things on the plan, John. So yeah. that's right. that's one of them. So the wall it would be built up, but we would stay under uh you know four four feet. Is there any elevations on it, Brad? No. No. Mr. Freeman, it looks to me it looks to me like the top of the wall is about or the top of the riprap is about three sixty four uh, as a proposed grade. And uh that's from an existing grade of three sixty two, so it seems like they're interested in putting some fill there. And uh it looks like it's gonna be a four foot difference across that riprap. So it's yeah, probably is closer to a, probably closer to a wall than anything else. So uh, we really would need some cross sections and some information in terms of uh, how they're going to construct this thing. It does indicate that it's one to one riprap slope. Okay, uh, so my my husband will jump in here. Okay, just one. Yeah, so uh, we can ask engineer to provide the, the cross section of the wall if that's what you need. Yeah, uh, Brad, why don't you hop in? You've uh, you've looked at this plan better than any of us. Uh, you had a number of comments on it. Uh, can you sort of list your concerns with the plan? And right. Well, again, it's just. You know, it's just general lack of details that should be fairly, you know, easy to go over and add. Um, I don't know if we need to spend time going down a whole list, but you know, the, the basic things like making sure we're on the um, the correct elevation datums so that we're we're not impacting any foreign land subject to flooding based on our lake observed levels. Um, you know, they're they're showing only the the FEMA zone A here and not what we've recorded like we see within other projects um things like not fully understanding you know what work is being proposed where you know there is a there is a towards the top this kind of dotted highlighted sediment barrier but all this hatched kind of area that shows planting area so you know there's work on you know, the the non-limited work side for instance you know we really need to see that specifically what's going on what's happening for plant and kind of thing, you know, the, the detail on the, um, the riprap, um, as well as, you know, making sure that these stairs and, and other things aren't, you know, impacting different resource areas too. So it's, it's nothing insurmountable, but there's just a, you know, a general lack of a lot of things on the plan. So it's, it's probably best that I reach out to the engineer directly on that. Okay. All right. Does anyone on the commission have anything else to add to this tonight? All right. I don't hear any comments. So uh, the owners have to understand that we can't really act on this favorably tonight based on what's been presented. So would you be willing to continue this hearing till our next meeting, which is January 19th of next year? Uh, sure. Okay. Okay. We will continue this public hearing until January 19, 2021. And Brad will be in touch with uh, your engineer. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Are you ready, John? Yep. Go ahead, Martha. 
Notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, that Gold Star Builders, Inc., 6 Jack, Jack Street, Worcester, Mass., 01603, has filed a notice of intent for the construction of a building garage addition to replace an existing garage, deck construction, and breezeway at 6567 Lear Street. A public hearing will be held on the above notice at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening, December 15, 2020. Do we have a representative for this hearing tonight? Yes, Nick Fasendola, Level Design Group, here on behalf of the uh, the applicant. Okay, Nick, why don't you give us a rundown? Sure, I'm gonna present my screen if allowed to. Yep. Go. Let's see. Can you guys see that? No. All right. One, let's try one more time. <clears throat> there it is. <clears throat> it's coming okay. up now, Nick. Okay, is that up? Yep. All right, great. So uh, once again, for the record, Nick Fasendola, Level Design Group. Uh, here on behalf of the applicant, uh, Level Design is the uh, project civil engineer for this filing. We uh, did the surveying and prepared the filing for this application. The uh, wetland resource boundary uh, and report was uh, done by Ecotech Environmental Consulting Services. Uh, what we have here is <clears throat> a proposed uh, reconstruction of a uh, garage slash workshop, uh, which is highlighted here in blue. So this is the existing structure. Um, we have an existing two-story dwelling located right here. There's a, <clears throat> a detached structure, which is the um, garage structure, which is located right here. The applicant is looking to raise this existing structure and construct a new garage workshop, which is uh, connected to the existing two-story dwelling here and with a second uh, floor breezeway right here. And there's a proposed deck, which will hang uh, overhang from the second floor. Uh, this property is located off of Lear Street, uh, right on Lake Quinsigamon. We have uh, BBW and uh, Edge of Pond or Edge of Water uh, for resource areas. It's uh, really well defined out in the site, but we had Ecotech uh, prepare a wetlands report and uh, delineate the area. It essentially follows this line right through here. Uh, the Edge of Water line is essentially the edge of the resource area. Uh, we also have some floodplain, flood zone, FEMA flood zone is. Uh, uh, mapped in this location on the current FEMA map, but we uh, coordinated with Brad and uh, <clears throat> discussed with him the um, established flat elevation of the pond uh, in this area, which is at elevation, uh, excuse me, 358.6. So we've uh, highlighted that line also on the plan, which is this dark line, this dark dash line, which comes through here. Um, Essentially, this whole area coming up through here uh, in Lear Street is all paved all the way up through here. This is all by existing bituminous pavement as it comes around and hooks into the building back here. Uh, the back of the property is all maintained lawn area, and there's a, a small um, patio which leads out to the water right there. That's all existing. Um, so essentially, the work is going to be in this area right here. So we're going to be raising the structure and, uh, and you know installing a new foundation for this uh, new garage uh, structure right here. Um, this area right here will be um, paved to match the grade of the uh, existing pavement and provide access into the new garage. Um, the main reason for shifting the location of this building is part of this building 
is located within the Lear Street right away. And, um, you know, we're required to pull it out of that right away area. Uh, we're currently have an application uh, for a special permit and zoning variance with the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals to, um, you know, construct this proposed addition. You know, we're a pre uh, as a extension of a pre-existing non-conforming use and um, some uh, additional relief for side yard setbacks. Uh, the Zoning Board doesn't feel uh, there'll be any issues issuing those permits uh, based on the existing structure which was constructed in the 1920s uh, being located in the right of way. So we're trying to rectify that issue by pushing everything back. Um, you know, as far as uh, site controls, uh, we're looking to install a erosion control fence with a straw wattle right at the back edge of the pavement. So we're just gonna follow that back edge of the pavement and uh, set erosion control all along this line to prevent any, um, you know, sediment or, um, runoff uh, from, from the construction entering the pond area. Um, you know, the only excavation that's gonna be done is uh, in work is to demo the structure and that will all occur within the existing paved area. So we don't anticipate any disturbance of any um, non-paved uh, areas. That's pretty much it. It's a straightforward project, but I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to the commission for any questions. Martha. No question. Jason. Bob. No question. Sorry about that. Okay. Bob. Well, sir. Ken. No questions. Brad. Just one comment with respect to the plan. Um, the erosion control, I guess I would like to see, um, you know, either straw bales or hay bales or something there rather than the straw wattles just because we do have a pretty high failure rate with those with those straw wattles. Um, and then the other um, question I have is, that I also don't see a file number for this particular project. Have you received anything, Nick? I have not received anything. I you know, made a last ditch effort to reach out to DEP today and did not hear back. Um, you know, we, we sent them a digital application and also received the green card back from the uh from the filing saying that it was received so i find it odd that i haven't received a file number yet but um yeah I, I don't have anything so i understand that the the hearing can't be closed this evening we'd have to wait until uh, a file number is obtained okay i would encourage you to try to follow up with dep again um more concerning to me is i don't see this project on their database at all um, normally, you'll see, uh, you know, a number of them without the file number until they can get around to issuing it, this particular one. And I know you filed it with us quite some time ago. Um, so this particular one is still not registered in there. And we've received others long after yours that are up on their website right now. Understood. I will, uh, I will work on getting them to issue a file number as uh, soon as possible. Kind of kind of got lost in the shuffle on my end. I should have uh, followed up on that uh, uh, a week ago versus uh, today. So, um, you know, I apologize for that. That's something that should have been done on my end, but we will uh, uh, look to continue uh, until that file number is issued. I'm all set, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Okay. Does anyone in the public have any questions or comments on this hearing? All right, I'm not hearing any. So, Nick, you did agree to a continuation to next month? Yes, uh, just one minor clarification point. Yep. Do you want me to submit a revised plan now that we're going to be continuing showing uh, hay bales or uh, a different yes. type of erosion yeah. control barrier? Okay. Yep. Uh, I'll make that minor edit just because we have the time uh, yep. and uh, get that over to you guys uh, in the next uh, week or so. Uh, and hopefully have a file number. Good. Okay. All right. Uh, we will continue this hearing until our next meeting, which is January 19th, 2021. Thanks, Nick. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. All right. Stop sharing. Okay. That takes care of our, uh, oh, by the way, on our agenda, 
There was one item listed. Uh, it was regarding Centec Boulevard. And there was a problem with the advertisement. And that's why it was not heard tonight in case someone was wondering. Uh, moving on to item four, which is new and old business. Uh, Mr. So Chairman. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, can we a motion? Yep. Okay, I would move that we issue an order of conditions uh, for uh, uh, to Anthony and Noreen Basaglia for site grading at 20 Whitney Street. Any conditions, Bob? I don't think there are any, right? We... No, I, think, I think we're, unless the other members have something to add. All right, do we have a second? Second. Yes. Okay, all, all in favor? And let's do a roll call. Martha? Aye. Jason? Aye. Bob? Aye. Ken? Aye. And John? Aye. I further move, Mr. Chairman, that we issue an order of conditions uh, for to uh, Waterview Realty Trust for retaining walls grading and stormwater system revisions at uh, 51 to 53 Bayview Drive. This is an amended order of conditions. Uh, Bob, condition-wise, uh, BMPs for winter shutdown, was that one of the one of the uh, items that I think we were going to uh, have him do. Absolutely. I don't know if we want to incorporate that into your motion. Well, we should if we want it, if we yeah. want to consider I think, it. Yeah. I think Brad was looking for that. You I, don't, I don't think that's it, necessarily. No, I mean, that's something I asked for them, you know, two weeks ago. You know, I was hoping to have an, an answer tonight on, on what they were you know, actively doing on site and preparing for the winter season. I mean, that's not something I think you need to, you know, add to this particular amended order. That's something that, you know, they're, they're subject to with what's existing and, and should be updated and dynamically, you know, according to the construction okay. activity. Okay. So they we said they follow up with you too, right, Brad? Didn't they say they right. follow up yep. with you? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So Bob's made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, we'll do a roll call. Martha? Aye. Jason? Aye. Bob? Aye. Ken? Aye. John? Aye. That's it, right, Bob? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I know. All right. Let's go on to uh, certificates of compliance. Uh, Brad? Yeah, so um, I'm okay with all of these, 38 Brooklyn Parkway, Lot 3 South Street, 128 South Consignment Avenue. Um, Lot 3 South Street, if the commission recalls, that's the one that had all of those retaining walls that were um, constructed that weren't on the plan that was approved. The commission asked for um, you know, some engineering certification that they um, were happy with the walls that were placed um, or, you know, an updated as built plan, not to necessarily you know, look for a new or amended permit, but to, you know, update the plan. We received um, more or less a, a field sketch update on the existing plan in terms of the wall location, which I could share if you, if you want me to. But more importantly, we did get the letter from the engineer um, that he was happy with the, the walls that were out there. I'm good. Sounds good, Brad. So the short answer is uh, yes, you do uh, agree that they should get the certificate of compliance. Yes. Okay. All right, so we have three yeses for those certificates, and let's go on to the extension permits. All right, so these, these ironically are um, same vicinity. There is three existing lots to that cell street one we just discussed that are still have not been constructed yet. 
So the, um, the, the applicant is looking for an extension on these as well. Okay. And that for how long, Brad? Is that a three year? Or does that go? Um, you know what? I meant to check on that and I did not. For some reason, I think it was two, but I can, um, want to so, give me one quick second. I can probably find that out for you. They can have up to a max of three, correct? Up to a max yeah. of, of three. Yeah. Um, I'm pulling it up right now. Two years. Two years is what they're asking for. Okay. Aren't they entitled to this because of the COVID and everything, Brad? Well, COVID um, is currently in, you know, don't quote me because those emergency orders are constantly updated, but they, you know, the last time I had checked on that, it was, it was automatically extending them while the emergency order was in effect. So I, th I think the risk there was that as soon as that emergency order is pulled, your extension no longer exists and if your permit expired. Um, so this is probably just the, the applicant being proactive, asking for two years now, and, you know, in case we're out of emergency by then and, the, you know, the permit was at that point. Okay, makes sense. Okay. Uh... So everybody's in agreement. Do we need a vote here, Mr. Chairman. Can we vote, Brad, on this? Let's yes. Vote. Okay. Um, okay, Mr. Chairman. Let's I would do move that we issue a two-year. Oh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we issue two-year extensions on uh, for the uh, existing order conditions for lot eight, nine, and ten South Street. We have a second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Martha. Aye. Jason. Aye. Bob? Aye. Ken? Aye. John? Aye. And that brings us to the end of tonight's agenda. Anybody have anything else to add? I do, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Brad. Just real quick, I did um, forward a copy of the emergency certificate that I issued this week for um, 210 South and Sigmin Avenue. So I just wanted to make the commission aware of that. The, the holdup on that was really the um, the property owners trying to, to find um, an engineer as well as a contractor um, that could really um, deal with that you know that that tough situation there in terms of, of access and construction. So they, they did settle on a contractor. Um, he was going to begin the work later this week. I think weather is going to impact that. Um, but I would anticipate, you know, once we're past this next winter event that they'll get going out there. I did make them aware that the emergency certificates, they're, they're issued for 30 days. You know, we're restricted by statute to that timeline that they should get it done by then. So I, you know, worked with them on that schedule. They seem to think they'd have plenty of time. So I think if they start it next week, they should be all set. Okay, good, Brad. That's it. All right. Good. They want to make a motion to adjourn. Doesn't look like anybody wants to leave. I so move, Mr. Chairman. All right. Do we have a second? Second. Roll call, Martha. Aye. Jason. Aye. Bob. Aye. Ken. Reluctantly. Aye. Aye. Okay, John, aye. Have a happy holiday, everybody. Merry uh, Christmas. Merry Christmas. You guys Merry all Christmas. in person, you know, it's too bad we can't be together, but yep. you know, next year we'll be there. All right. Good night. Okay. Good night. Happy Good night. New Year. Good night. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.